Hello, in this video I will explain how to control the Mi Arm robot using Copelesim uh, with a coordinated axis movement uh, with an underlying uh, cubic trajectory over the time. Okay? Let me first explain or briefly explain what we have here. We have the Mi Arm robot with, uh, which is, or has been configured in a kinematic mode in which all joints here are purely kinematics and the, um, all the links you can see here they have no dynamics at all, okay, just for simplicity. Okay. And then we have three joints to control, which are the first joint, it's a vertical joint, the second joint is this robot arm here, and then the third joint will move actually this uh, bar here. Okay. We also have uh, a graph in which I just simply am depicting the trace that the robot will do at the end effector here, uh, the end effector trajectory. I'm just simply tracking a, a gripper object, which is an object that has been placed here just on the tip of the robot uh, with its x, y, and z coordinate, as well as the, um, in this case, the, the uh, joint angles q1, q2, and q3 corresponding to the first uh, three joints, as, as I said. The x, y, z coordinates actually are being displayed here as a 3D curve. The other ones will be displayed as a temporal or time, time plot, actually. Okay. Uh, let me just explain what we have in the code and, uh, and what do you need to do. Okay. Well, let me just first move here to the syscall init function. Uh, I'm defining four configurations. The first one is the configuration where the robot is, Q0. And then I'm defining three more configurations with different angles for each of the joints. Okay. Then I get the handles of each of the joints and set the joints to the initial configuration position. Okay. Then I compute a function which I called compute trajectory, in which I just provide the initial configuration as a separate uh, argument and then a list of configurations that I would like to, to reach and this, the time intervals that I need for each of these configure or these trajectories I want to generate. Okay? That will uh, produce a, a, a variable or a, or a list with all trajectory configurations that I need to uh, follow in order to perform this sequence that I want here. Okay? This or the number of points in this trajectory, it's uh, stored here in this variable here, and then I have here just a counter that I initialize to 1, so that in the syscall actuation, or actu actuation sorry, I just simply set the joint position as long as I have points in that trajectory I have computed, so that I do the for loop for each of the joints, from 1 to 3, okay, and it's equal actually to the dimensions of Q0, which is 3. So I do this for loop here for each of the joints, and once I set the joints, then I increase the counter, okay, and then I move to the next simulation step, and then I will move to the next uh, trajectory point, okay. So let's see what we have here, uh, or what, what I have implemented in compute trajectory, okay. This compute trajectory function is actually calling uh, another function that I call moveFJ, which is actually uh, trying to emulate the rapid uh, instruction uh, for ABB robots that accepts an initial configuration, a final configuration, and a time that I want to uh, generate or the trajectory from that initial configuration and the final uh, configuration. Okay that will generate or produce uh, a set of points in the uh, joint space, in the configuration space, that I will merge here, so uh, with the sequence of all uh, configurations that I want to reach, I will merge them all so that I follow that trajectory. Okay? This is just an auxiliary function to actually uh, merge all trajectories, but the important one is uh, the move up J function. Okay, this function here, it's computing. Uh, first thing it does is uh, computing the number of points that I need for that specific trajectory. And that depends on the 
the time uh, interval that I want to spend uh, to generate that trajectory divided by the simulation time step. Okay? That gives me the amount of points that I want to generate from Q0 to Qt uh, that trajectory. Okay? Then I compute a cubic uh, trajectory, uh, the, par the parameters of a cubic trajectory this is explained actually in a document which is uh, included in the description of, uh, description of the video that I explain how, uh, how to compute these cubic trajectory parameters, okay? But that will return uh, uh, four parameters so that I then later can evaluate those parameters for a given time. And that's what I'm doing here in this for loop, I'm just simply iterating from 1 to n so that I uh, start with time 0 and then I evaluate all trajectory uh, points I want and generate those trajectories here and store them here in Q track, okay? And then increase the time with uh, delta t, okay? So these uh, qubit, get qubit trajectory params and eval trajectory params are two uh, functions that I have here. As I said, uh, I need um, four parameters per each of the joints so that I have an initial value, whatever it is, sorry, a final value and the initial value and then I have some maths which are very simple that this uh, qubit trajectory ensures that it starts exactly where I want in the initial value, it finishes at the initial value and the velocity of that trajectory at the initial and, and final uh, time uh, are equal to zero, okay? As a result, I have these four parameters here that I return and I use those parameters here in the eval trajectory and here is where you can see the cubic actually. I have a times, uh, in this case, uh, uh, t to the power of 3, uh, b times t to the power of 2, then c times t and then I have d, okay? That defines the actual cubic trajectory that will be evaluated for a given time, okay? Well, let's see how it works, uh, this uh, simulation. Here, uh, I have uh, the actual time plot of the trajectory. So, and as, as you can see here, this is what I meant referred to as a cubic trajectory, okay? Up to five seconds, uh, then I move during 15 seconds from 5 to 20 with another trajectory and then again 10 more seconds with another trajectory. Okay? And you can see here that the trajectory is not on a straight line because I'm moving in the configuration space, okay? For generating linear trajectories we have a specific video for that. Thank you very much.